Thank you for reminding me of that. I don't I can't believe this. Oh, tornado warning. I hate tornadoes. We're all going to die. <laughs>
drive me down the road, I'll be the a baby. That's what I should have been home yesterday. Yesterday. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. Was it Virginia? Mountain mama, take me home. Country roads, country roads, take me home to the place I belong. Was it Virginia? Mountain mama, take me home. Nostalgia, but 
Can you believe your dad is going to be okay? I'm very relieved. Even though he isn't going to die, I want to learn more about heaven and how I can go to heaven. I hope that you don't plan on getting into any car accident soon. No one plans to get into a car accident, but I want to be ready whenever I die. We, well, I will tell you more about the good news of the gospel. Cause we've grown up 
on the far side of the road from them, going in the same direction. His name was Talkative. Faithful called out to him. Friend, which way? Are you going to the heavenly country? Yes, yes, that is where I am going. Fine, then I hope we may have your good company. coming across the road. Sure, I will be delighted to be with you. <laughs> Come on then, let us walk together. We can talk of things that are helpful. That suits me fine. To talk of things that are good with you or with anyone else is very acceptable to me. I am glad to meet with those who are interested in the better things in life. For to tell you the truth, there are very few these days who want to talk about things of value. Most of our generation are interested only in the trivial things of no profit. This has been a heartache to me. That is indeed regrettable. For what in this world is more worthy of our conversation than the things of God? I like you very much. Your words are full of conviction. And what else is so pleasant and profitable as to talk of things eternal? That is, if a person has any interest in that which is marvelous and enduring. For instance, if a person likes to discuss history or the mysteries of life, or if he loves to think of miracles, where will he find records so trustworthy or so beautiful, beautifully related as in the Holy Scriptures? That is true. But to be benefited by these things should be our aim. That's what I say. To talk of these things is most profitable. For by so doing, man may get knowledge of many things, such as the vanity of earthly things, the value of the things above. That is general, but to be specific, by this a man may learn the necessity of the new birth, the insufficiency of our works, the need of Christ's righteousness, and so on. Besides, by this a man may learn what it is to repent, to believe, to pray, to suffer, and the like. Also, by this you may learn what are the great promises and consolations of the gospel. To your own comfort, and to learn to refute false doctrines and opinions, to vindicate the truth, and also to instruct the ignorant. Oh, Mr. Talkative, this is also true. And I'm glad to hear you say these things. Alas, the lack of them is the cause of so few understanding the need of faith and the necessary necessity of a work of grace in the heart in order to have an abundant life. And if so many ignorantly live in the works of the law by which no one can gain the kingdom of heaven. Yes, my friend, but heavenly knowledge of these is a gift of God. No man attains to them by human effort. Or by only talking. All this I know very well. For a man can receive nothing except if he gains.
given to him from above. All is of grace, not of works. I could give you a hundred scriptures to verify this. Well then, what is the one thing that we shall discuss at this time? Whatever you wish, I will talk of things heavenly, of things earthly, things moral, of things spiritual, things sacred, of things profane, things past, or things to come, things forward, or things at home, things essential, or things circumstantial, provided that all be done in a profitable way. Faithful, wondering a little what kind of person talkative was, as talkative was slowing up, walked up beside Christian, who was a few steps ahead and spoke to him. Mr. Talkative, let me go talk to my friend for a moment, if that's okay. Oh, sure, it's bad. What a brave, well-informed companion we have, Christian. Surely he will make an excellent pilgrim to walk the way with us. Well, this fellow with his tongue will mislead those who do not know him. You know him then? You know him? Yes, better than he knows himself. Pray tell me, what kind of person is he? His name is Talkative, and he is from our town. I'm surprised you don't know him, even though our town is quite large. Whose son is he, and where does he live? He is the son of one Sayware. He lives on Pratting Road, and he's known to all who are acquainted with him as talkative of Pratting Road. Notwithstanding his large vocabulary and his glib, smooth tongue, he is indeed a solid fellow. Well, but he seems to be true. Yes, away from home. To those who are not well acquainted with him, like some artist pictures you've seen, they look best at a distance. <laughs> but you smiled, which almost led me to think you were jesting. God forbid that I should jest about this man or anyone else. <clears throat> Maybe I should not have smiled. But I was only smiling at your high opinion of him. Far be it from me to falsely accuse anyone, yet I will tell you what type of fellow he is. He is for any kind of company and any kind of talk. He prides himself on being adaptable. Like a chameleon, he changes his color every time. He changes his environment. He can talk just as easily in a tavern as he is talking with you. And the more he drinks, the more he talks. Pure religion has no place in his heart, in his house, or his daily living. His religion is only in his tongue. He uses religion for pastime conversation to entertain. Is that said? Then I am greatly deceived by him. Deceived you are. If you think he is a sincere pilgrim, remember the proverb, they say and do not. And the scripture also says, the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. When he talks of prayer, repentance, faith, and the new birth, he is not speaking of his own personal experience, but merely repeating what he, what he has heard. I have been in his home. I have observed him both at home and abroad. I know whereof I speak. His house is as void of the religion of Christ as the white of an egg is of flavor. In his life there is no sign of prayer or repentance, he is the very stain and reproach of Christianity to all who know. The name of Christ is scorned in all that end of town because of him. Many of his neighbors say of him, a saint abroad, a devil at home. His family find it so. I am of the opinion that he, by his wicked life, has caused many to stumble and to fall. And unless God prevents, he will be the ruin of many more. Well, Christian, I am bound to believe you, not only because you say you know him, but also because I know you, you are a truthful man. I cannot think you speak these things from ill will, but I believe they are true, and you think fellow pilgrims should know them. If I had known him no longer than you have, I might have thought of him as you did at the first. For if the source of my information had been only those who rejected Christian religion, 
I would have thought it was slander which comes from malicious tongues against good men's names and professions. But of all these things, yes, and many more, just as bad I can prove him guilty in my own knowledge. Besides, the best of men are ashamed of him. The mention of his name to those who know him makes them blush. Well, I see that saying and doing are two different things. And hereafter I shall watch that distinction more clearly. They are indeed two entirely different things. As different as the soul and the body. For as the body without the soul is dead, so saying alone is nothing but a dead carcass. The proof of pure religion is in its fruits. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Of this talkative is wholly unaware. He thinks that hearing and talking the Christian religion constitutes a Christian. Hearing is only mo momentarily receiving the seed in the mind. And talking about it is not sufficient proof that fruit is indeed in the heart and life. Let us assure ourselves that at the day of judgment, men shall be judged according to their fruits. Paul says that one may speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not the love of God or charity being nothing more than sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Words giving no life, though spoken by men or angels, shall never be heard in the kingdom of heaven among the children of light. Well, I was not too fond of his company at the first, but now I am sick of it. In the story, the conversation continues with talkative till he becomes uncomfortable and leaves.
then I told the guy, that's not my mom's spaghetti. <laughs> Dude, why are you so tired? It just started. <laughs> like a park, not rain here. What did they think when we were going to go hiking the mountain? It feels like we've been hiking for like three hours now. No, it's only been like five minutes. I can still see the parking lot. <laughs> What's that sign? Bigfoot crossing? Yeah. What's a Bigfoot? Do they not have Bigfoot in Malaysia? No, we have small foot and cute guys there. <laughs> well, Bigfoot's like this creature. Some people think like he's a demon. Other people demon? think he's just like an animal, like a missing link. Missing thing. link? Hey, um, excuse me, guys. Want to come hey, hey, guys. Um, hey. You're, you're not thinking that um, Bigfoot is actually a real entity, uh, well, I mean, I think there's some evidence for Bigfoot, yeah, here and there. It's kind of evidence for for Bigfoot. Yeah. Wait, 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 you're not serious, are you? I mean, there's a sign over there. That says Bigfoot. Yeah, why don't they put up a sign if he's not? That sign is just a meme. It's just like a photo Photoshop thing. Like it's just a funny image. Don't worry. About it. Well, I mean, sure, maybe the sign is, but I mean, they got like footprint evidence, and there's a video that you've seen the Patterson Gimli film. I've seen a film because I'm well educated. I've, <laughs> I've spent 10 years in my PhD, and I've seen no scientific evidence of Bigfoot anyway. Hmm. I mean, uh, there's plenty of plenty of evidence to go around, you know. There's, really? yeah. Hey guys. Hey, what are we talking about? Well, you know, Bigfoot. Hey, Bigfoot. Bigfoot. That's exactly what we're looking for. Let's go grab our tools. Yeah. yeah. All right. Way too excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where are you guys going? Okay. Okay, yes, let's continue the hike. I don't know. I hope they're not bringing guns. Alright, guys, uh, let's go. Let's go. Well, what? Big foot, big foot, big foot. What do you need all that for? Okay, let's just. Yeah, some people are like way into Bigfoot, but other people I think aren't into him enough. I'm Bigfoot gorillas. <laughs> Say something about Bigfoot, which leads me to a question now. Have you learned about Bigfoot yet in Sunday school? No. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. I cannot tell you how many emails I sent Pastor Rob and Pastor Mike, how many church meetings I tried to start. I probably need to go talk about Paul and see if the uh, way of the master talks about it. Because what we really need to be concerned about is evangelizing to Bigfoot's immortal soul. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, how do we really know what Bigfoot is right now? Anyways, Matt, you're, this is besides the point. We need to be thinking big, and we need to make sure that we evangelize to every tribe and every nation and every tongue. <laughs> and Bigfoot not excluded. All right, let's go. I think I'm going right there for No, I know a shortcut. There's a way over um, here. I think I'll stick to that. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah. It was my Peter. Yeah. 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 It was my uncle John. Huh? 
Yeah, I'm serious. We're just ready. Hey, guys. Hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, no. hey, what do you got a gun for? Well, we're going to get this guy. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? Terrible trigger discipline. Yeah, get the finger on it. <laughs> it's ready. Somebody's definitely going to get shot. <laughs> oh, you know it. You know it. It's going to get there. <laughs> Have you uh, seen Bigfoot anywhere yeah. by chance? Oh, yeah. I saw it walk across here. Oh, really? It really went in there. there. Are you sure you should be taller than that? No, oh, I should not. <laughs> Where? Right up there? What's he like now? Was he like hairy or furry? Yeah, he was big. Oh, Make sure they don't kill anything. I have to go tie my shoe up in this block. Hey, you're bad than me. <laughs> whoa, whoa, what's that? Get down here. Get down here. Get down here. Get down here. All right, all right, here he comes. I got it. 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 I got it.
Well, isn't it two of the unclean and seven of the clean? Okay. What's the name of the raised print that deaf people use? Braille. Is it possible to end a sentence with the word the? With the word the? Yeah. And be grammatically correct, of course. I wouldn't say so. Okay. <laughs> Spell the word shop out loud. Say the word? Spell the word shop. Shop? S-H-O-P. S-H-O-P? Yes. <laughs> what do you do when you come to a green light? Go. Great. <laughs> Spell the word silk. S-I-L-K. What do cows drink? Water. Okay. <laughs> you did really good. You got two out of five right. <laughs> really good. Now, here, how many of you channels did Moses take into the ark? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the name of the raised print that deaf people use? <laughs> they just read, right? <laughs> okay. and if I was to try to find a sentence that ended with the word the, let me see. Oh, here it is. <laughs> So, those are trivial. It doesn't matter if you get them right or if you get them wrong. It's just trivial. Here's a question that does matter. What do you think happens to a person after they die? Nicholas? Well, they uh, face judgment and go to either heaven or hell. Okay, so how do I make sure I go to heaven and I don't go to hell? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he's given us the law and we've all broken it by nature. And we're worthy of his wrath. Are you saying I'm a sinner? Absolutely. Uh, okay, good. That's <laughs> the truth. So that would lead into the gospel and we can find out what they believe mm -hmm. and uh, share the good news that Jesus Christ suffered and died in our place. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of ways to lead into the gospel. You can get creative and do it. So thank you, David.
of this church regarding Bigfoot. <laughs> For those of the, that might be visiting with us tonight, and also in light of a certain skit, um, I won't specify, which suggests that a reiteration of our policy is definitely in order. <laughs> Let me just read it here. We believe that Bigfoot is not a descendant of Adam, not made in the image of God, not possessing of a reasonable and immortal soul, and not regarded as anything other than an animal. Therefore, any attempts to evangelize Bigfoot or to promote the evangelism of Bigfoot will not be tolerated. Any church member who takes part in unauthorized Bigfoot evangelism should be reported to the elders immediately. So, Jake, once we're done here, I need to talk to you. I, I, I'm not I'm not upset, I'm just disappointed. Maybe we should bring that yeah. before Sunday? <laughs> uh, this is mine. Oh.